So polypeptide chains, if they are linked through disulfide bonds, you need to separate those chains by breaking disulfide bonds. There are different methods of breaking disulfide bonds. Disulfide bond, as we know, is between two uh, side chain of two cysteine amino acids, and uh, it uh, can be reduced in, in presence of some chemicals like performic acid. So performic acid oxidizes uh, disulfide bond, and uh, that. Uh, make cysteine into cystic acid that's a permanent separation of cysteines so these cysteines can now cannot come together and form disulfide bond again similarly one can use a reducing agent like beta mercaptoethanol or dithiotretol in that case the disulfide bridge is converted to sh sh free cysteines those free cysteine if they are uh, provided with oxidizing environment they can uh, reform the disulfide linkage so that's a reversible reaction uh, similarly iodoacetic acid also can be used in order to separate cysteine in disulfide bond so in this case also uh, the cysteines they are acetylated and they are permanently separated from one another from the disulfide bond this also not a reversible reaction so it depends if you want to separate disulfide bond permanently or you want to have reversibly modified cysteines. So depending on that you use a chemical in order to break disulfide bonds in protein. Like uh, uh, we have used chemicals to identify N-terminal, C-terminal of uh, a peptide or protein also can be identified and for that enzymes are used. The enzymes which cleave peptides from C-terminal side they are called carboxypeptidases. Carboxypeptidases are a family, they belong to the family of exopeptidases which cleaves from the terminal side. Whereas pepsin, trypsin and those we have seen, those are uh, uh, endopeptidases which cleave peptides uh, in the middle of the sequences. So like carboxypeptidase A that cleaves aromatic and branch chain amino acid from C terminal side of a peptide and protein. Carboxypeptidase B works on lysine and arginine on the C-terminal and uh, carboxypeptase C or Y that uh, cleave any amino acid from the C-terminal side. So you can use carboxypeptidases and see which amino acid is being liberated as a result of their action and then you can identify C-terminal amino acid in a peptide or protein. Now let's look, in a, uh, look at an example of reconstructing sequence. For example, you have a peptide and uh, the peptide is cleaved by trypsin. Trypsin we know cleaves on the lysine and arginine C-terminal and you have got two peptide fragment, this one. Now the same peptide uh, uh, has been cleaved by staphylococcal protease. Staphylococcal protease cleaves on uh, aspartic acid and glutamate, glutamate C-terminal and you have got similarly, you have got two peptides again. Now you need to find out its sequence, you need to reconstruct. There are always two peptides you are getting, so but you need to see which peptide is the N-terminal side and which is C-terminal side in order to see the sequence. So there is a simple way, uh, when any enzyme acts on a peptide, the N-terminal and C-terminal amino acid remain same in the peptide. For example, you have a peptide, this is cleaved by one protease, so the N-terminal side peptide and C, it will remain same if you if you cleave the same peptide with even at two places. So these N-terminal, C-terminal amino acid would always remain same. So you can see the common N-terminal and common C-terminal amino acid containing peptide in the uh, both uh, both enzymatic degradations, and then you can infer about C-terminal and N-terminal side. For example, you look at trypsin digest, the N-terminal is alanine in one peptide, in other peptide is leucine. If you look at the staphylococcal protease, uh, one N-terminal of one peptide is uh, phenylalanine and another peptide is leucine. So the common is leucine in both the cases. So that means the leucine containing peptide is N-terminal side, it is the first peptide from N-terminal side. So we can say that, so LVGKAE, this is first peptide and uh, FSGITKP, this is second peptide. So this would be sequence of this peptide which can be constructed 
uh, using information derived from these proteases and digestion. Now let's look at another example of reconstructing sequence. Uh, you have peptide and that is cleaved by cyanogen bromide and those fragments they are shown in red color. There are four fragments which are uh, achieved by cleavage with cyanogen bromide. We know the CNBR cleaves at methionine C terminal and the same peptide when treated with trypsin it has again given four fragments which are shown in blue color here. So you, we need to reconstruct the sequence from these information. So first uh, likewise you look at uh, the common end terminal amino acid in these peptide sets. So if you see here D, K, K, Y and this side you have Q, G, F, Y. It means Y containing peptide at end terminal would be the first fragment and that is here Y, R, G, M. So this is first peptide from end terminal side. Uh, now similarly you can see on the C terminal as well. On C terminal if you compare you will see uh, lysine. K is common in both sets. So this free K would be fourth fragment. Now we need to find out second and third fragment. So look at the first one YRGM. So this YRGM you compare you compare with the trypsin digest. YRGM so that is matching with here this fragment so GM DIK so it means DIK containing peptide would be the next so DIK is this one so this is number 2 and this number 2 is DIKQM so DIKQM you search for the same sequence in blue color in the trypsin digest so QM QMK so it's coming here QMK. So next peptide should start with K and this is here. So number three. So this is number three. So that's how if you can put the, these pep fragments into this one, two, three, four order, that will be correct sequence of this peptide. Now this is a very popular method of uh, sequencing amino, uh, sequencing proteins and peptides, the Edmund degradation method, but there are some limitations also. For example, if uh, length of the peptide is very long, we have seen that uh, up to 20 or 30 amino acids in a peptide, they can be sequenced with uh, very good uh, efficiency, very good accuracy. But if the sequence peptide is larger, in that case, uh, the reliability keep going down. So you cannot uh, have a reliable sequence for longer peptide. You need to have a smaller peptide in order to get uh, accurate sequence. Then uh, very important one is purity of the sample. Your sample should be pure. There should be, uh, it means there should be single end terminal. Otherwise if you have heterogeneous mixture, if there are more than one polypeptide or peptides together, you will get multiple peaks and uh, it will be ambiguous situation. The sequence cannot be deduced. Your sample should be completely pure for uh, sequencing using Edmund degradation method. And uh, there is no high throughput capability. You cannot sequence simultaneously many proteins using this technique. Then uh, sometimes in protein and peptide and terminal alpha amino group is modified. And we know that in Edmund method, PITC react with alpha amino group which is free. If somehow that amino group is not free, like it's modified, modification could occur in term of, for example, acetylation amino group is acetylated or formylated. In those cases where N, N terminal alpha amino group is modified, this method will not work. A PITC will not react with the N terminal amino acid. Similarly, if you have cyclic peptides, cyclic peptides means uh, you have circular peptide. There is no free N or C terminal. N and C terminal of a peptide, they are joined together through peptide bond. So that gives rise to cyclic peptide. So in case of cyclic peptide, there is no free N terminal. So that also will not react with the PITC in Edmund degradation method. So in, in fact, in such cases, the cyclic peptide, they are first hydrolyzed. They are first hydrolyzed so that uh, you, you have N terminal being produced. And then it, and these are sequenced. Or if you have uh, unmodified cysteine in, in uh, uh, peptide or glycosylated residue uh, in the present in the peptide, in that case you will get a blank cycle. Those will not be recorded by uh, 
the sediment degradation method of peptide sequencing. Now we can look at uh, one example of uh, uh, deducing protein sequence from information. For example, you have a peptide and uh, this peptide uh, when this hydrolyzed with 6 molar HCl and boiled at 110 degree, it gives rise to 4 amino acids where glycine, there are 2 glycines, 2 glycines and uh, you have uh, 1 leucine L, GGL and phenylalanine F and 1 tyrosine Y. So these are 5 amino acids where 2 glycine is there. So this, this, this information you have got by hydrolysis of the peptide. Now the condition says when this peptide is treated with Sanger's reagent, it gives dinitrophenyl derivative of tyrosine amino acid. That simply means the N-terminal side you will have tyrosine amino acid. This will be first amino acid in the peptide. Now if you look at the condition C, when this peptide is uh, you know, treated with the pepsin enzyme, pepsin cleaves as N-terminal of aromatic amino acid, you get a dipeptide containing uh, F and L plus a tripeptide containing Y and 2G. So after pepsin digestion, you are getting uh, phenylalanine and leucine containing peptide. We don't know if it's FL or LF plus a tripeptide that contain two glycine and one tyrosine, GGY. So that, 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 those fragments you get when you treat with uh, pepsin. Okay, so from here you can deduce complete sequence of the peptide. For example, this is GGY. GGY, we know that Y is N-terminal amino acid. So the sequence would be not GGY, but YGG. So this is YGG would be at N-terminal fragment. Now the second fragment could be FL or LF. It could be FL or LF. So how to ensure? For that you look at uh, the pepsin treatment. When pepsin cleaves, you get a dipeptide FL or LF. So pepsin act on C N terminal of aromatic amino acid. So pepsin would cleave here on N terminal of F. That's why you get FL. If it is LF, in that case, you will not get a dipeptide containing L and F. So that's why the sequence would be YGGFL. So similarly, sequences of peptides and protein that can be deduced, reconstructed using information from the uh, protease digest of uh, longer peptides and proteins using admin degradation method.